Hello and welcome. This is Ms. Tabisu. As you know that we have already started with Beboli Naidu's journey to Joburg. In the previous part, we have seen that the two little children, Naledi and Tiro, started their journey to meet their mother at the Johannesburg station along with Aunt Gress. It was the rush hour when they boarded on the train at Sweto, which is the largest black urban settlement in South Africa. It was so crowded that the two children could not get a seat inside the train. So they clung on to Aunt Gress. But on each station, more and more people entered the train. And when those people wanted to get out of the train to board down onto another station, they pushed forward and came near the carriage door. At one such station, the two little children were also being carried forward to the carriage door and they could not resist and thus they got off on the platform. They did not know the station and neither they had any ticket or money to buy the ticket. They tried to get back inside the train but could not as though the train was moving still the people were coming out and few were trying to enter. They could not do anything. But they could see Grace inside the train. She was also squeezed. Though she tried to come down to help them out. But she could not. As I've already said, the train started moving. They were very helpless and could not think what to do. So they thought that they should go and stand on the overbridge so that if Grace would come, they could see easily. But as they were going towards the stairs, they suddenly heard some noise and commotion. As they turned, they saw policemen in uniform were coming and it was a raid, search for pass, that is the tickets. Many people were running frantically. Both were very frightened. They couldn't understand what to do. So, these two children thought that they should go to the other side of the platform. But as they were about to go to the other side of the platform, they saw that more policemen were coming from the other side. Now we will see the rest part of the story. Where can we go? Tiro urgently tugged at his sister's hand. As the two children saw more policemen coming on the way where they were, Tiro instantly asked where they could go. We will have to sleep past them, she whispered, pulling him towards the stairs. Naledi spoke very softly that they have to sneak through the policemen so that they are not caught by them and they went towards the stairs. Some people were filling into pockets, others frantically searching through bags, pass raid. It was a surprise checking for the ticket by the police and those some people were frantically searching for the ticket in their pocket, whereas others got busy searching for it in their bags. A man was protesting loudly that he had left his pass at home. It would take only two minutes to get it. The police could come and see or someone could call his child to bring it. He cried out his address once, twice, slap. A man who was caught in the raid protested 
that he had left his pass at home and as his home was nearby it would take only a minute or two to get it he also added that the police could come along with him and check out the pass or someone may call his child to bring the pass from home and as he cried out his address a police officer slapped him how joe bake barked the white officer in charge his blue eyes stared coldly as a black policeman pushed the man against the wall this story actually depicts the life of the black african during apartheid in south africa the black people were very much discriminated and the whites tortured them and treated them as slaves so the officer in charge who belonged to the white dress shouted at him and said to shut up and the black policeman pressed him against the wall houchback is an african word meaning shut up one at a time people were pulled forwards to be checked when a boy said that he wasn't yet 16 the policeman just yelled that he was a liar and a loafer tiro felt his heart freeze but the boy didn't cry instead his eyes seemed to have fire in them as he was handcuffed a voice in the crowd shouted shame locking up children people were being pulled forward one by one so that their tickets could be inspected it was a rule that person of or above the age of 16 years should have a pass but when a boy told that he was not yet 16 the policeman shouted at him calling him a liar and a loafer tiro felt very nervous at the sight but that boy didn't cry instead he had hatred and anger in his eyes as he was being handcuffed someone from the crowd shouted that it was indeed shameful that they were locking up children as the muttering grew louder a woman spotted naledi and tiro and screamed you will say these kids are 16 next suddenly a woman who noticed naledi and tiro screamed out of disgust that the police will be saying these small kids to be 16 as earlier they didn't trust the boy's word and handcuffed him the white officer took a threatening step forwards he looked murderous then glancing at the children he made a sign with his hand for them to go through the white officer proceeded forward with a threatening look and then glanced at naledi and tiro and said them to go through as they seemed less than 16 years of age we can't stay on the bridge while the police are here panted naledi when they had got past from the bridge they could see the road outside the railway station next to a large van were more police an old woman was being pushed inside the van tiro looked back at the people in handcuffs on the bridge naledi said that they could not stay on the bridge while the police were there and from the bridge they could see the road outside the railway station where more police were standing next to a large van an old lady was pushed inside the van many people were being caught without pass and were being handcuffed Why don't we run and call the child to bring his father's pass we heard the address so we can find it let's hurry then agreed naledi tiro asked naledi 
if they could run and call the child to bring his father's pass as they had heard the address and could easily find it naledi agreed and they hurried towards the man's home to inform his son about his father's arrest once past the police van they asked a lady selling apples at the roadside to point out the way the children weaved in and out of people as they ran along the stony road between rows of gray block houses all looking exactly alike no great leafy trees here only gray smoke settling everywhere so as they went past the police van they asked a lady who was selling apples about the address that the man spoke of then the children moved here and there along the stony road and they could see gray block houses and they all looked the same there were no green trees only gray smoke everywhere when they reached the right house they found a boy struggling with a heavy tub when naledi and tiro finally reached the man's house they saw a boy was trying to move a heavy tub as soon as he understood their message he dashed into the house and a minute later came rushing out with a book in his hand all three raced back down the road but just as they came in sight of the station there was the big police van pulling off the boy shouted at it as it sped past them carrying away his father he flung the pass down picked up a stone and let it fly at the van the van swung round the corner the stone just grazing the mud gird as soon as naledi and tiro conveyed the message that the boy's father was arrested by the police he ran into the house and came out with a book in his hand the book was actually the pass book naledi tiro and the boy ran down the road but just as they neared the station they saw a police van leaving the boy could see his father and shouted at the van as the van went past through them the van went away so the boy became very furious and those threw the pass down picked a stone and threw at the van but the stone just lightly touched the mud guard of the police van as it swung the corner i will burn this one day stormed the boy picking up his father's pass how can our parents put up with it there was fury in his voice then it became gentler thanks anyway for trying i must go and tell my mother now the boy angrily said that he would burn that one day and he was also furious to know how could their parents tolerate with the discrimination and torture being inflicted upon them by the whites after that he calmed himself down and said that he should go and inform his mother then and went away the children stood silently watching as he walked back home naledi and tiro silently watched the boy as he walked towards his home naledi tiro startled they looked around to find from where the voice was coming it sounded quite far off looking up towards the railway bridge they saw grace waving quickly they ran back to the station suddenly naledi and tiro heard someone calling out their names they could guess that the sound was from 
some far off distance. As they looked up towards the railway bridge, they could see their aunt Grace waving her hand. Soon, quickly they ran towards her. Grace came down with their tickets to get them through. It was a relief to be with her again. This time, I'm really going to hold on to you, she told them, taking each firmly by the hand. Grace came down with the tickets of Naledi and Thiru. The children felt very much relieved on being united with their aunt Grace. Grace then told that she was going to hold their hands firmly so that they did not get separated from her. Do you know what happened to us? Thiru was anxious to tell Grace all. Thiru was very small and thus was eager to tell about the incident that happened with them after they boarded down from the train. Here goes the word meanings. First, frantically, in a quick, disorganized way. Second, pass, a ticket or an official document giving you the permission for something. Third, raid, a surprise search or checking by police. Fourth, how jo bake, a word in Africans, the official language of South Africa meaning shut up. Fifth, bark, spoke angrily or shouted. Sixth, loafer, a person who wastes his or her time instead of working. Seventh, handcuffed with hands held together with metal rings attached to a chain. Eighth, muttering, speaking in a low voice. Ninth, panted, breathed quickly with the mouth open. Tenth, pulling off, means leaving or moving away. Eleventh, grazing, touching and scraping the surface lightly as it passes by. Twelfth, mud good, a flap behind a tire of a vehicle that prevents mud or water from splashing. Here we have come to the end of the chapter. I hope you well understood the lesson. Thank you. Have a great day ahead.